And you know what? You know what? Off of you saying that's that sounded like a Pokemon command, I'm not even going to be like, hey, let's take a break and then start this episode. Because I never do that. I always just go, which Rob can confirm, I always go, hey guys, we are now in the last hit. The episode has started. You're here with me, Lyric, the usual, the dashing, daring, dangerous dancing Dagda, who's here every week wow. as well. He's actually been here maybe more than me, because I wasn't here last week. And then... The special guest, someone on on the casting team, we call the Godfather, because if you cross him the wrong way, we might not ever see you again. <laughs> Otherwise known as Munchables. How you doing, uh, mate? Yeah. Hey guys. Hey guys. How's it going? Uh, I I will just quickly clarify for legal reasons. I've never killed anyone. Uh, I don't know of anyone Allegedly. that's died ever. Allegedly. Uh, yeah, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I'm just saying I have I have not seen Jake since the last time I saw you. That's a, that that's a factual statement. I also have not seen Jake since the last time I saw you. Okay. So <laughs> oh. be careful. Be careful when you start throwing stones in glass houses, buddy. No one calls me the godfather on the LPL casting team. I'm just saying. Nobody t- nobody calls me that either. <laughs> True. I feel like I feel like you're more of the the magician of mojo in my mind. The magician, which which sucks, because we just started talking about Mojo right before we started the episode, uh, and that would have been great to talk about now. There but, have been very few times that you and I have spoken lyric without talking about Mojo. <laughs> let's be honest, that's, that's fair. That's true. I, I consider myself the first disciple of Mojo. I I was there. <laughs> I was there when Mojo was the created. Inception. You're in the Photoshop. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You are the Moses of Mojo. You came down with the Ten Commandments of Mojo. (laughs) Mojo. (laughs) You know, you know. I I, I also kind of feel like like Rob in some ways is the architect of Mojo, just because of that one great meme that he gave you the idea to do. Of like, it was what the three of us, no, the two of us, you, oh yeah, Joe and Dom Dom. on like the sinking ship going down. I can't even remember what team that was for, but I think it was um, Top Esports. I think yeah, it was either Top Esports or it was FPX at Worlds. I don't remember which, but yeah, it was one of the Mojo teams failing tragically. It yeah. probably was. It probably was FPX at Worlds, which <laughs> is kind of depressing and actually a great way to start. Because speaking of FPX at Worlds and someone who was the king of Mojo last year it was doing B, and we just had LNG play against JDG. Uh, Munch, I know you maybe not have been able to catch it because we we pulled I you. I did see that. Uh-huh. Oh, since we. For people who don't know, like, Munchables found out he was going to be on this episode, like, 30 minutes ago, filling in for Ox. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but yeah, we, we had we had JDG versus LNG. Actually, a lot closer than I expected. Yeah. Like, LNG mm-hmm. came off a good showing against IG the other day, but LNG still felt a little bit fluky. Rob, I know you hit on it in, like, before the games of, like, right, th- their score doesn't feel representative of how they've played. But, I mean, that game won. They looked good, and uh, yeah. it might be against JDG who just have this weird habit of going to three games. But I mean, coming off those, coming off those games, uh, yeah. how was it? Uh, I will say I don't think the gameplay was particularly riveting for game two and three. It was a little bit flu- fluky, but honestly, I like looking at game one and how I've seen LNG play for the majority of the split. Honestly, it was a lot better. Than we've seen from LNG before. Like whatever about the game's kind of being a bit slow and dragging on. Honestly, I think the this was a version of LNG that was like, oh, okay, so they are actually working together, game one at least, relatively well in the early stages. Doom be starting to roam again and things like the Talia. They're playing for neutrals, like they're actually setting up as a team to try and go for Rift Out. Like that was my what a lot of my biggest gripes with LNG is that they just don't do anything in the early game. And then they kind of get to the mid game. They'll win a team fight or two because they just got a hand stiff. And then they kind of realize, oh, wait a second, lads. We haven't done any dragons. We have no Rift Heralds. All towers are still standing. Yeah. And then the game just drags on to like 45 minutes because they've got to go back and like redo all the dragons. And it take an extra 20 minutes to get into the game. So it's it's actually nice to at least see in game one they were proactive. And then they just went back to, oh, a cork is open. So now we just don't do anything for 25 minutes man it's so depressing to watch i feel like we hit on it every week of like we have doing be in the mid lane his strength the roaming the enabling sides and it just isn't coming through again i mean i still feel like he's been one of the better performing members despite the terrible game three where yagao did absolutely gap him today uh but yeah (laughs) you know actually on on the note of game three doing v specifically 
the funniest part about that game to me was that Doombie's best moment was when he packages through the team and then manages to get back into a perfect position because he gets salted by Kanavi back across the team. <laughs> and it's like, gets his package across everyone and then also gets to position like an AD carry. That's like my favorite moment of the entire series today. It was Man. just beautiful. What a bro Kanavi is for that, but... <laughs> You know, but hey, hey, that's that that's some of the magic that you have when you're a star player like doing me right. Because who knows? Who knows if he if he calculated that into the equation, packaging in. He knows the threat's gonna be there. <laughs> Kanavi's gonna Kanavi's gonna freak out. Kanavi's gonna be flustered. Kanavi's always been someone who hasn't performed on you know like the bigger stages like playoffs. So doing me just read him like a book. And <laughs> earlier you told me <laughs> you can re- read Dagda like a book. So therefore, okay. Kanavi and Doonby are just you and Dagda. Checkmate. Maybe. Maybe. Dibs Doonby. Dibs Doonby. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm fine with like, that. I'm on the winning like... team. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Rob I'm world champion. I'm world champion. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I do yeah. got to say, I do got to say, though, like, Man, JDG are so weird. I did like listen yeah. to, to like your guys' conversation last week, and it's like, yeah, JDG have these weird moments, or maybe not even moments, right? JDG always play like they're ahead, which just sounds like yeah. a typical LPL thing. And I do feel like we have a couple teams that are like that, but I feel like JDG specifically index into it harder than most. But man, when three six nine is playing as well as he is right now, like I I love it. I'm all in this. Yeah. It, this even gives me vibes <laughs> of like. Love like how like V five and stuff were playing in spring. Obviously, it worked out a lot better for them. But but point is, three six nine is a treat. I, is Sion sick? There are, there are, yeah, there are two players in the league that can top damage charts while playing Sion. It's three six nine and the shy. No one else can do what that. I don't understand how they are always at the top of the damage chart with the play Sion and stuff. Like three six nine is popping up. I mean, I didn't mean to talk to you there. Sorry, doctor. No, I was just gonna say like I one hundred percent agree with you. Like the I don't know how he just always manages to find these big decimating smashes like almost every time i'm watching him, he gets these like great engages off the ultimate and then decimating smash lands and like every other person i've seen will end up with like oh he's slightly mispositioned it so they flash out or they are able to use a like mobility spell to get away from it but every single time he hits this massive amount of damage like even today he like nearly one shot doombie and um uh sorry not saying yeah go the light on the back line of one of the fights where he just like came around the Got aside, flanked them and just absolutely destroyed them. So I don't know. 369 just looks good in a whole plethora of different things. Mm-hmm. Like you're getting the Scion, he looks great on. I think his gangplank, I think he's the probably yes. the best gangplank we have in the league. Like yeah. I don't know anyone who's able to look as good as he does on us. Um and then he's still able to bring out things like the Kale or anything else. It just feels like he's so many different champions right now. And even like things like the Jax as well are still there. So even it there's just like doesn't seem to be a stall he can't play. Yeah, like, like yeah, we, yeah, true. Week one, he just was like bringing out set against everyone and everything, and it looked. It's like, man, no one's playing this champion, and three six nine's gapping everyone on it. So yeah, I I will just throw in there as well. The last person that I think played gangplank as well as three six nine is currently was Zoom on JDG, kind of hilariously. <laughs> like I feel like maybe this is a JDG thing. If you want to be the top laner for JDG, you have to be the best gangplank in the league. Those are just the rules. That's just that. That's just how it is at the top lane. I mean, I, th- I feel like that's another another big thing where. Right, on broadcast, like we don't hit up on coaches too much. I just feel like in general, like you you can never know the impact of a coach. But you look at JDG, right? 2020 obviously was was like their year. They win a title. Twenty and they had home as their coach. 2021, home actually took a year off. Didn't coach anyone. JDG had a new coach. Home came back in 2022. And it feels like honestly, yeah. this might be a coach that you could actually tangibly see the difference in what they're doing. And now we will specifically credit him with with creating god gangplanks i'm sure home just like rob with his lee sin is out there in solo queue <laughs> decimating people with the gp 369 I've, comes on the roster and there it goes i've actually taken in your footsteps now and created a secret solo queue account where i just play silas in the mid lane and i'm having so much fun so maybe i'm just going to become a silas <laughs> trick now you can't do it you silas is great fun silas is great yeah. fun Look, I'm just yeah, like saying. Just, it, it's one of the most face roll champions ever in lower elos because yeah. you literally just smash every single button on the keyboard. Somehow you're full health and everyone's died. And it's just, yeah. you just watch your guy spin around. It's great. I just <laughs> realized I have I have baby Uzi and and the second incarnation of Dandy. 
on the podcast right now. <laughs> My God. You run into these guys on EU West. I'm telling you right now, please dodge for the sake of your LP. <laughs> how's your uh, how's your Rengar, Rob? Are you? <laughs> yeah, I, I can honestly say be done, I have not played that champion in God only knows how long. So yeah, probably not that great to be honest. I actually haven't played him since the rework, so definitely not good. <laughs> I remember when like there was whisperings that we were gonna get Rengar back in the meta when when you know he did get like some of the buffs and some of the changes on the patch, and then sadly we just never got to see him. Kind of disappointing. Uh, he, Rengar is one of those champions that I remember back in the day in LMS that like every Korean team in scrims would play at top lane and just like stomp. They would never play it on stage. I'm sure none of you can think back to a game where like SKT or now T1 were crushing on Rengar, but in scrims, I can promise you they were bodying everyone. Yeah, I have definitely seen Rengar in top lane, but I don't know if he was ever crushing. And I think the last time I saw Rengar was SOFM playing him. Oh, anyway, wow. tank Rengar. Wasn't that? <laughs> yeah, as yeah, a counter yeah. to the Evelyn, actually. Finals. Yeah, he countered to the Evelyn. Yeah. It was genius. That was, it was the game sick. we won. Yeah, it was that actually was sick. Like, that I, was the that last was one time. one of my favorite things about that world, honestly. That Rengar build and, and pick, it was just like so quirky. I, but that that's so SOFM, right? Like literally the mad scientist in the jungle brings out the world's final stage. Like you can't get more mojo than that. You really can't. <laughs> no, you can't. But I wonder... I feel like, you know, now we're on 12.2. Do you guys consider Belveth a mojo cha- Is Belveth an SOFM champion? Um, not an SOFM. Maybe because you just just farm and it goes well. Because <laughs> like, technically like she just wants champion. to farm. It's oh, yeah, like, but he played it today. Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. It's like when you think about, like, the, the like, Graves Kindred kind of I want to farm early and then I want to take over team fights later on is like loosely the same profile as a Belveth. I feel like that's like you, that's your ticket really. Plays like Kanavi where he could just go fucking ham. And, yeah. Oh, I can't swear on the I, podcast. Sorry. He can go really <laughs> ham and uh, and just the rest of JDG's on the same page to back him up. Yeah, yeah Bel- Belveth's one of those weird ones where I'm so happy we got it today because honestly, coming in, I didn't know. I didn't know how long we'd have to wait because i think it's really interesting with belveth because i know the sentiment of a lot of people especially like on the western side that i hear whether it's like broadcast or players or, or anyone is like obviously super op champion you, you can even see the fact that she she got nerfed on 12.21 patch after she came out heavy nerfs still super strong but when i talk to people on like lpl side players and coaches they kind of think a lot of them think it's a bait they're like yeah this champion in solo queue insane but they don't know if they can make it yeah. work in competitive. This was actually the biggest concern I had for Belveth when she first got released. I think I do think she's really, really strong. Yeah. But <clears throat> I think the way the LPL plays where it is a much faster pace doesn't really lend itself to Belveth because she does need a bit of time to scale in where she gets attack speed and she's able to get all that kind of good jazz. But I also think she's a champion that requires her team to be able to play around it. Because like, you want to try and play for like Rift Heralds, you want to be able to farm, you probably want to invade, you want to be able to get like early takedowns. And that doesn't necessarily bode well if you're if you don't have a team that's willing to sacrifice their lane to play around it. And at the moment, I don't feel like the jungle meta is, hey, you know, play laners, play for jungler. So I feel like you need like very specific teams like JDG that are willing to kind of play a little bit more around their jungler to make that work. Um, but I just don't know if it's going to be a thing that we see more often. Because I think if we have a faster pace, I don't think Belvet gets to a point where she actually yeah. has like Blade of the Rune King and all that before you have to start fighting. I think she just ends up super weak in those initial fights and doesn't bring enough to the table, say like a Volley Bear or a Lee Sin or anything along those lines. Yeah, it's I I'm honestly kind of surprised like about like what you just said about, you know, we're not having a meta about playing for jungle because when we came into the split, especially with like the tower damage changes and things like that, I thought, okay, if it's going to become harder to go for dives, I mean, just by a byproduct, right? It becomes harder to play for lanes. And it just seemed like an easy transition would be playing more for jungle camps. So I'm actually really surprised that we haven't had more teams opt into that style, which like you said, would obviously open up for a Belveth. I feel like some teams do. JDG, you just hit on. V5 uh, are another team who, Rare even in spring, were super. Yeah, 
<laughs> they try. That, that is the <laughs> that is the key word. They, that, that's their dream, right? Their dream is Lu Yen getting in the enemy jungle yeah. and and actually being able to find those camps. But Lu Yen's another player who I haven't seen playing it in solo queue. I've I've gone through a bunch of the LPL junglers accounts, and mm -hmm. it's like Clid was a big one. Uh, Kanavi obviously was a big one. I think Tarzan's put some games on it. SOFM's put some games on it, but a lot of a lot of our junglers on their main accounts at least, right? I don't know if they have like secret accounts or if they're just mainly playing it in scrims, but Karsa, Shaolong, Bao, Shadow, Tien, these guys have all put like one game on the champion. So I I don't know. But LPL yeah. LPL I do feel like is always slower to adapt to like new things coming into the meta. I was just uh, I was just taking a look at uh, Game of Legends there to see what the the global win rate was and, and all of that. The player that's played it the most is a player called Daglas, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> double take for a second. Wait, Daglas, <laughs> what, what shut, shut up! Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! I need to figure out how this champion works. The, when the when it's an essay on the abilities, I need to play that champion oh, to yes. figure out what the hell yes, is going on. Yes, yeah, it's true. <laughs> Dude, I've been trying. I've genuinely been trying to play jungle in draft pick to yeah. practice Velveth so I understand her better. You can't get her. No. She's banned every single game. I have queued like maybe 20 plus games trying to get her and I cannot get a single game. Man, when, when just blind pick. When your ult when your ult has two passives, like you know, you know it's just too much. <laughs> oh. Which I mean, I guess is one of them a, really a passive when one of them is just like you pick up void coral, right? So it's it's like I don't know. But yeah, that champ every champion now. Every champion now is just a giant novel of text. And like if it is hard for, for us who have to put so many hours into the game, I can only imagine how hard it is for the casual player. But even even for teams, especially with how big the patches have been this split. Like you think coming in, I feel like every patch has been massive. I've I've seen uh the the like kind of pre notes for the next patch as well, twelve point thirteen, supposed to be another big patch. Uh, I'm I'm not surprised that, that we aren't seeing teams like adapting or picking up champions faster. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think one of the really interesting things as well is like the difference in patching this year versus like previous years, right? I think for the last, I don't know, five, six years, right, has been really light with the patches during split and especially leading up to the Worlds because they had, you know, back, I can't remember what season it was, but there was the, the couple of season. Worlds in a row where they massively buffed Triforce and so Jackson Cork oh, yeah. two worlds yeah. in a row right and ever since they basically made a big promise that they would never do big patches for worlds and throughout summer split in general they've been super light on those kinds of changes and then this year they seem to be going really aggressive with the patches so I'm really curious what like the end goal is like because obviously they must have like an ideal version of the game that they want for 2022 worlds I'm really curious what that looks like and and what their logic is on the way that they're patching these these huge patches to try and get there. Does anyone remember what the preseason was like? What what the overhaul was coming into the year? Was that was that the Chemtech and Hextech Drake? Was was that yeah all the two new Drakes? Yeah. yeah, because I, I feel like that might have been it. Like, and they, they changed I, Side Tower Gold as well slightly. I think I, I feel like didn't they? I remember coming into yeah, the year the tier twos. Yeah, it didn't feel like there was a really big change. Like obviously Chemtech was a huge change just because it was OP though. But like the game itself didn't. It didn't feel like previous no. years were right. We're like huge change in preseason, and then you can kind of coast off that for a long time. Where are our alcoves? Where are our alcoves? <laughs> I want <laughs> alcoves for my alcoves. <laughs> <laughs> just, just make the map bigger, man. I'm in. Just make you know what? Yeah. Screw it. Screw it. If, if we want big changes in preseason, add another lane. I yeah, six v six. Let's go Overwatch. <laughs> no, see, I didn't say add another player. Change I... champions mid game. Oh my god, no! <laughs> it's a it's a coin flip as to whether the Rift Child spawns on top side or bot side, and Dragon where it spawns as well. It's like Scuttle yeah, Crabs. They that's change called Wild Rift. You know, <laughs> I'm I'm actually afraid of you guys saying these things because. Right, not to <laughs> what if not, right? <laughs> exactly. Not, not not to give you know the right balance team you know too much crap, but it's like it just feels like some of the things that that happen or come out or the way patches happen. It's like I wouldn't be surprised if someone in the office is like, oh, Dagda just said alcoves and alcoves. Ooh. <laughs> I do gotta say, I mean, you guys did catch the attention of someone like Mort Dog. Like you guys, you That's guys true. have a lot of influence. <laughs> yeah. So I, I gotta. I think the I thing mean, is, Shanji though, did Mort Dog them. He really yeah. did. It's um. Sorry. Go it feels like they're trying to do a huge amount with 
hey, we want to have as many cool and unique things in every single lane as possible. And I know that this was something that they talked about coming into MSI. I was like, hey, we want to have a bunch of champions that are available. So you can pick a whole bunch and it doesn't feel like you're limited to just a handful. And I do think at the moment, the meta does feel relatively open. Like, I know there's like a couple of picks here and there that just seem really strong. But I think on a general sense, there's not like three picks per lane. This is all you're getting. Okay. So which I think is a good shout. But definitely when I look at how complicated Belveth is... And even like down to stuff like what's a Remora versus what's Coral versus what's this and what what's your Lavender Essence and all that. Like there's so many different things that you have to remember. Then as well, like the way she interacts with Rift Herald brings a new mechanic to the game. Yeah. And you're looking at the new champion that's about to re be released, Niv Niva or something, I can't remember her name, where she's now a melee AD carry and she's bringing a new idea to the game or at least maybe a fresh take on an idea that they wanted to try with um, Mordecai's or boss. But it feels like they're trying to bring a whole bunch of different things that change the dynamic of a game from game to game so it's not just like okay well here's your front line here's your ad carry here's your magic damage and this is your junk it feels like they're trying to mix that up and i think it's kind of cool in a way but i i worry that some of that novelty is going to kind of wear off and then you're just like in a weird spot where yeah. there's some stuff that's super op or it ends up being in a weird spot where oh well we have to ban the melee AD carry because she heals too yeah. much and healing's been nerfed and now she's super potent and what the hell do we do? You know, like I, it, it's that kind of stuff that I get worried about. I think I, I'm definitely on a similar page to you there. And I think like, like you're saying, the, the stuff that shifts the dynamic of how the lane works makes it very difficult for new players to learn the game. Like let's say you're an AD carry main, you've been playing AD carry versus AD carry with supports yeah. alongside you. I mean, even the fact that it's basically only mages that you get nowadays uh, in in lower elos. Like you don't get actual supports. Nobody plays actual supports yeah. in low elo for some reason anymore, um, because the support items get so much gold that you can just one shot everyone as brand. So I, why would you ever play Nautilus, right? Um, but on top of that, now you're getting things like Neela uh, and like these systemic changes in the lanes. I would much prefer if they kept the base game. Like like eighty carries is eighty carries, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But then have some like systemic change in the preseason that's like, okay, uh this lane has twenty percent increased magic damage for this game. Like the way that dragons work, right? Where maybe maybe the elemental rifts change the damage percentages in different parts of the map or something. So then you could have like Syndra Bot would be really, really good this game, whereas AD Carries would be really good a different game. And then there's a very clear visual change and it's like this game, this style is going to really, really work. And you know this before the draft or whatever. Like I think that could be a really TFT. cool way to try and do this, <laughs> but like just changing the, just adding these weird champions that just break the game, I don't think. Yeah, you just need to know what the Mirage emblem is before you yeah, go into gonna, the game, so then you can try and, <laughs> yeah, but it could, you know, it could do an animation on the client saying, like, yeah, you yeah. know, it's this kind of rift today, you know, this is the kind of whatever. Yeah. You, look, it's just as kooky as there was apparently a champion that was going to come out, or not going to come out, that was being developed, that was going to have uh damage varying on the actual state of the moon currently oh like, yeah a full moon this champion was going to be broken <laughs> yeah if it was a, 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 a if it was an eclipse then this champion does like nothing like in act like the actual oh. moon. so they just I made a felios made him broken all the time so it full moon. <laughs> i Always think it might have been it might have been a felios that that was like one of the proposed That's... ideas but like you know you gotta start kooky and then get normal it's just i feel like they're yeah. not getting normal enough anymore yeah yeah, I don't know if I want to Google moon cycles before I log into every game, though. You know, it's like, oh, damn, well, yeah, man, exactly. I didn't realize. I'm not, I'm not saying that was a good idea, that one. Yeah. I love it. Actually, he's just bringing us like, once in a blue moon, this champion has a good play because it's literally once in a blue moon. <laughs> you could say that it, that it happens every 200 years. You know, oh, no. You know, I would love, I would love if, like, right, you haven't, you have. Let's say World Finals. You have 180 carries who've ever played the champion because it's garbage 90% of the time. But you have 180 carry who does love it. And just on that day of World Finals, the moon right at the apex. They're like, man, that would be the ultimate RNG they deciding. Actually, I would love they it. They actually plan worlds around how balanced this champion is. Like the finals have to be like three quarters of the way through oh, the cycle. God. No, no, no. See... See, this was this was the rabbit hole I welcomed, and this was the rabbit hole we get with with bringing Munchables on, dude. This yeah. This so is... let's bring it back. So I think Hom 
is really good at helping people learn gangplank. And honestly, I think this is just a perfect full circle <laughs> to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so speaking well, of- actually, on that note, where does where does Gangplank's cannonballs come from? Could be the moon. Could be the moon. That's, I'm just saying we could implement true. the moon mechanic for Gangplank. That's true. We actually don't know. But yeah. speaking of the moon, speaking of home and all, high all tides, these, all the high mean. tides, uh, <laughs> and mostly going back to three six nine. I feel like I feel like top lane right now, and LPL's in a really interesting place where. I don't know. Like we just kind of have the some unexpected names. I think performing better than a lot of other people. Like again, three six nine. I think arguably the best top laner in the league right now. I think Wayward, another person you can put in that conversation. Not something I would really expect. Uh, Breathe. I think looking solid, but not you know not anything like superb or standout. Bin's been bin. Just I have a curveball. You got you have a curveball. I think Shanji has been report performing yes. really yes. well. Shanji's He's been, been insane. Beast. I love the it. The Shivana lo- looks class. His rumble game, he yes. took Bu Bu and spanked him around the ring. Yes. <laughs> like eleven and zero. It was disgusting. Shanji, like I didn't know that all the Shanji needed was for the jungler to, for Aki to just walk up, put his hand on the shoulder, and say, "You got this," and then leave. That was all that Shanji needed. Shanji just needed to believe that he had help for him to just pop the hell off because apparently he's never got it before. I've seen Aki gank like two, three times, and Shanji's just like, "I could do it." I have the power and then just starts mowing people down incredible Hulk style whoever he's against it's insane it's yeah. actually insane he, just, he still thinks he's got that power from the gank the, the three games yeah, <laughs> yeah. he's just going with that momentum I definitely think in my mind he to where I probably don't think in current form he's the best top laner he is definitely yeah. the most exciting top laner for me like yeah. uh, and like he's been leaning on the Shivana already. he's played it three times in a row he's really been the only person to make it work uh, we actually saw Chalitza bring it out the other day. And you could see Chalitza had, like, an idea of, like, oh, this this champion, like, is really strong in lane post six. Like, your all-in threat yeah. is insane. But would, like, overestimate, would go for dives, die. So where Shanji has that, has that unlock. In every yeah. every OMG game now, awesome. I'm just excited. I'm like, dude, what is he going to bring out next? Is it going to be Soraka? Is it going to be Teemo? I actually have no <laughs> idea. On a quick I, side I note it, on the Shivana, uh, I have seen... LNG Ala is practicing, but Doombie's been playing in mid. Oh, they're actually working no. out as a flex pick for the mid lane. So just keep that in the back I pocket. Mean, that That's a little podcast Doombie. tip, but we're gonna hold on yeah. to see if it actually ends up getting up. The 2022 Cled. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. I think the the other the other top laner I want to give like a slight shout out to is uh, ZDZ. I feel like ZDZ's had some really, really good games this split, like better than I would have expected. There's been a few games where he finds a solo kill or whatever yeah. that you. You don't anticipate from ZDZ. Like, I don't think he's the best in the league or anything crazy, but yeah, I, I think he's been having a I, really good split. I like that you bring him up because, right, because ZDZ isn't really showy or, like, isn't, like, some, I'm going to take over the game. I think his growth, I mean, not think, his growth has definitely gone under the radar, right? Because, I mean, when ZDZ came in, he was just some random, like, no-name player. Like, ah, he's, he's serviceable for, like, a, a lower-tier team. But it feels like he's gone from that and... Unlike players who maybe like luck into a meta and then become really good or, or, you know, get a new team or something like that, he's been with the same roster, has kind of slowly improved, and now honestly just looks solid. Like, is a top laner that for AL, like they're able to play around. Ox references it every time that like him and Forge have one of his favorite team fights, like of all time, that he, that he had last split. And I, I guess. I think ZDZ is actually a really good representation of how I feel about top lane and LPL right now, where I don't necessarily feel like our top laners are too showy right now, maybe in the vein of, like, when someone like Xiao Hu was popping off before or, like, the Shy's pop-off games, but it feels like our top lane pool is, like, kind of quietly become very solid. Would you guys say that's fair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think there's been... <sighs> Especially because it was so shaky over the last little while. It was but like I'm also so like kind of up curious. or down. It was like one or the other. Yeah. I feel like we don't... We have a handful, I'd say, of exceptional top laners. Yes. But it feels like it's it's a general solidness, not a general greatness, if you get me. Where I was kind of like... When you looked at before, it was like, oh, well, there's Zoom, 369, the Shy, we're all going absolutely bonkers in the top lane. It was like, even Bin as well was like, yeah. these guys are going to murder you. You step into the top lane, even Nuggery as well. Even like, Allah. Yeah, Allah, true. Like, these guys were like, we are going to absolutely demolish you. You need to have, like, 
some of the best hands. You need to have some of the best understanding of how this line mechanics work to just get entry into this. But it doesn't feel like that's the case anymore. And I definitely think it is a step up from their bottom teams. Mm -hmm. But it also feels like with the way the meta is at the moment, and we're seeing a lot of gangplanks and kills and orans and sejuanis and all this kind of stuff, the ability to just completely body your lane opponent isn't there. So I do think it's kind of a, a little bit of a, well, you're playing champions that tend to just do fine in lane and therefore everyone kind of looks fine but i'm curious if we end up going back towards like renekton's and all these kind of things how that actually ends up changing yeah we've i mean we've we've had some renekton's i have not had the pleasure of casting renekton have either of you guys because no. every time i've watched every time I god I, I guess maybe ox has gotten all the renekton yeah. every time i've seen a renekton picked i'm like oh god oh god and yeah. Sometimes it's in like spots I can understand, uh, like like we've had Renekton in Italy come back out and things like that, right? So it's like I get the pick, but yeah, not really able to deliver, and just always always makes me remember, you know, Munchable's favorite favorite lad, Morgan. Yeah, uh, Morgan. Morgan. You know. I will say, I'm just gonna throw. This is kind of a, a a mishmash of the topics we've hit on so far. Renekton top could be a good angle when you've got the Belveth in the jungle. You need to win that first. Herald fight. Well, guess what Renekton does? He wins that first Herald fight. Damn it! So yeah, I mean, look, if you if you need a a bridge for the early game for Belveth, maybe Renekton is so, the key. So, oh, you're no. Let, let's go a step further. Not only Renekton, you just go like three hard early winning lanes. Like we go like Renekton, we go Callista Bot, we go. Oh my god, what's something that beats everything in mid lane? Why am I blanking on mid lane champions? Uh, Blank. Ari. You know, let's go. Let's Lissandra? wait. Wait, no, no. I know the new one in this minute. Lissandra, there we go. Lissandra apparently beats everything. Oh, Lissandra, yeah. okay, there yeah. we go. Three hard like champions that can fight early, win, chill on their own. Belveth, the whole SOFM's dream, dude. SOFM yeah. doesn't have to care about his laners. They can just play by themselves, win their lanes. He's vibing. He gets to farm his jungle. Like still I'm shows up to Rift Herald three minutes early and dies. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Don't but, do um, that to him. <laughs> but that I think that's the thing and coming kind of full circle this conversation like for Belvet and top lane why I don't think Belvet kind of like fits in the LPL is like because she wants something like that but like I'm looking at the top lane champions that we have that are the most played this split nah can do reasonably fine but isn't going to like hard win Gangplank isn't going to hard win Gwen is pretty common but again like she's not going to hard you win you that Rift Herald fight um, Kale Sejuani Fiora Orn. Camille, fair, Jax, like Gragas, Aatrox. Yeah. Like, we are so far Sejuani's down. Yeah, Sejuani does, but you're so far down the list of yeah. champions that are viable in that regard. And I think that's why, like, we're kind of seeing everyone is solid in top lane is because none of these things kill you. Like, Fiora's the only thing that's there that's Shanji's like, oh, rumble. yeah, I'm a mess Shanji's you up. Rumble. That's, that's yeah, the one. Shanji's Shanji's rumble. Yeah, Shanji's rumble, Shanji Shivana, and everything else <laughs> just is like, hey, we're going to get yeah. through this together. <laughs> like, My goodness. Yeah. I agree, but oh, you know, we, we've gone we've gone full circle enough. Now it's the time. Now it's all of our favorites' time. The fans' favorite time. It's time to praise rookie because we got rookie back on the <laughs> rift. And my goodness, like the mojo. yeah, the mojo. The, 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 you just can't say mojo enough when it comes to rookie. I thought he'd come in and like I knew rookie would still be good. I knew rookie would still be one of the best. But I thought maybe there'd be a touch of rust. You know, probably hasn't been scrimming with the team like the most. Like sure, he's been in China right in quarantine, so he probably has been scrimming a bit. But like I thought that I thought that it would take a little bit of time before we got the absolute king of kings. And sure, they played they played against Rare Adam right. It wasn't it wasn't against like an RNG or anything like that. But my God. Rookie was, like, single-handedly taking over the game, invading with Shaolong Bao. Game two, he had, like, the insane play bot that pretty much, like, gave them the game where he's, like, waiting in Fog of War, comes in, gives a bunch of kills over. And, man, after after, after going a few weeks without Rookie, I don't know what I'll do in my life, like, when we don't have Rookie. Like, what do you don't, do don't with you no say, Rookie? Yeah. Don't you say that <laughs> sentence. We will always have Rookie. Rookie will play forever. Uh, by the time he's getting old, they'll have invented some science to keep uh, the wealthy alive, and he's very wealthy. So um, I, he'll play forever. He'll he'll always be an LPL player. I promise. I I give you my mojo. Thank guarantee. you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm 95 percent certain that rookie is the only reason Talia has ever looked good in Chinese solo queue. Because I look <laughs> at every other person who's played Talia, Doombie, 
all these players crying is the only one who kind of made it yeah, work as I'll, well i'll say cry, like, cry is the exception yeah where i like looked i was like this champion sucks the wall placement is awful nobody's really doing any roams like they're not actually getting any sort of like good gravel or unraveled earth placements and then i look at rookie i'm like oh this is what this champion can do this is what you can actually make work if you're good at this pick and he absolutely body people like that talia yeah. game one was absolutely insane like his positioning on the e there's ability to roam around the map the weavers walls in general were fantastic like this is how you should actually be trying to play this pick and it doesn't feel like anyone else is able to reach that level like he looked incredible i think on that point like the weavers walls specifically there are so many talias this split that you see in pro play they just blast the weavers wall out just because because ults up and they're fighting and it's like i, I guess i should press r now it's the new package it's, like, it's it's so useless <laughs> a lot of the time and half the time you're like just blocking your team off from actually doing things but then you see rookie using it and it's just like ah oh, like he's using it on cooldown to roam around the map to make plays into the side lanes like aggressively invading with shallow bow as well like oh, it's just it just feels so good to watch. i also feel like it goes to a point that i feel like is always kind of uh, been one of my distinctions between knight and rookie is like like rook, rookie rookie knight can both play everything right but i feel like knight is a player who's always a lot more liberally pulled out more champions than rookie like rookie rookie seems like he keeps his champion pool more controlled and like will bring out like new picks or picks you don't ex like he doesn't show too often in like specific situations that that fitted and i feel like maybe that's why rookies like proficiency on every champion just looks so much higher than everyone else's mm -hmm. because i mean he isn't just doing this stuff willy-nilly he's, he's putting in the hours he's grinding in solo queue i think it was jake who said he played he played 140 hours of solo queue this week which yeah. uh, he, he was wrong he he meant this month but i mean after after that series against lgd like i honestly wouldn't be surprised if it came out that rookie played you know more hours of solo queue this week than we're actually in this week so uh, I, I don't even i don't even and know there's not even a question here because it's just like guys just yeah, let's yeah. just praise but it's rookie. even okay i'm not so, you go, go on. You go, Rob. i was just gonna say it feels like such a nice breath of fresh air as well because like we've kind of been having conversations about the mid lane feels kind of stale at the moment you've got your knight you've got your show who dream i think was quite good but there's no one where you're kind of looking going oh my god well that's the x yeah. factor that's the that's the guy you can look and go best player in the league handily or anything like that and like having rookie come back and just handy and now again i know it's rare adam so maybe this is an overreaction but it just felt so refreshing to see rookie back and bodying people on on different champions like i just it felt like i hadn't got that feeling from the lpl all split long and i felt like with rookie back that mm. was the that was exactly what i needed to kind of like refresh my palate on the lpl <laughs> Yeah, I will just, uh, I'll play slight devil's advocate here. Not really devil's advocate. Obviously, I've, everyone's a huge rookie fan, right? I once predicted rookie to win a series. As yes, you did. yes, you did. Yes, you did. But, but uh, I do want to just say, like, I feel like that that slight criticism of Dream there, Dagda, I know you're not trying to bag on Dream mm. or anything like that, but um, I feel like the expectation for Dream was so absurdly high because he's replacing rookie. And I think he did an awesome job. I like... I really, really hope, even though I love Rookie, even though Rookie's insane, I really hope they find situations in which they can play Dream on this roster still. I hope Dream doesn't just get the hope treatment, you know, and just get pushed to the side for a couple of years. And then later down the line, like 2022, Hope comes in and suddenly he's one of the best AD carries in the league, right? He was behind Viper that entire time. And he was good back in 2020 when we saw him. Like, I really hope for Dream, that is not what happens now with V5. I hope either A, they decide to play two mid laners or b uh they let him go to a different team in 2023 because that'll be so devastating if like dream after such an insane rookie split doesn't get to continue that momentum forward. yeah i know i don't know if i expect to see him anymore this split because i mean he, he already went back down to the LP, uh, ldl he actually he went back down played his first game one picked up the mvp right away it's like i mean <laughs> a, a, after what that man did in lpl i feel like it's just expected but yeah. he he is yeah. definitely a player that if we don't see next year, I think will be disappointing. And I mean, even just tying that back into to what Rob was saying about right, it felt like a lot of a lot of players in mid lane this split, like the magic's not there. Even players who, again, no matter how you feel about them right now, like I think Fofo is a good example of like Fofo was super good last year. Like like no one can deny that one of the best mids there was. 
obviously the magic's not there right now. I mean, he, he literally got taken off the roster and icon icon got brought, well taken off the starting roster and icon got brought in forge might've improved, but still like he's forge crying kind of same, like looks better for, like role player. I, I feel like there's a lot of teams where like dream could slot into, but I, I actually really like that you hit on how like, Again, that, that the excitement for mid lane maybe not being there, but just the league as a whole. Because now with the rookie coming back in, I feel like one conversation we have a lot on broadcast is about how the LPL has been a lot messier the split. Like we have had some we've had some long drawn out games. They've been very messy. A lot of teams just not not even following like the same systems or, or game plans or like win cons that that we saw in in spring. I think Ultra Prime is a really good example of like sure they brought in Zoom, but you would still expect it would all be be all about Elk and Chauci, and it's not. Uh, actually, Hacker most of the time is actually playing up towards Zoom, and what felt like was a way that they were winning consistently, making them look good. They're not doing, and I feel like a lot of teams are are, are like that right now. Uh, I mean, LNG is the perfect example, right? Like I look at. Doombie, and I'm like, this guy roams. This guy makes plays early. What do we give him? Quirky. Like, what do you do? Like, First it doesn't make sense. Every game. Yeah, and that's what I, like, I understand that it does a lot of damage, and he does a lot of damage when he gets his hands on it. Oftentimes, 40% of his team's damage plus. But you're just not doing anything in the early stage. And it feels like the, even in spring, we were talking about LNG, it was like, this is the Doombie and Tarzan show. Like, these two linking up together is what makes LNG special. And it feels like that's just completely gone. You look at EDG, what the team that was incredibly strong at team fighting now looks like it's lost a couple of keyboard keys. Like, I don't understand what the hell is going on. Like, none of it, like, all the strengths that we had for these teams just seems to have gone up in smoke. And it's it's really confusing to me. Like, pretty much across the board, like, I think, well, BLG, we always kind of knew had struggles. Um, and they're trying to figure that out. EDG look weaker. FEX at least are starting to pick things up. But they looked super weird at the start of the split as well. Where they were like, oh, well, yeah. we played around bot lane super consistently. That was our winning formula. Now we just bring in um, a stronger mid laner. Who's, Care has looked fantastic. Care mm -hmm. honestly has been an absolute baller. But then they're like, oh, yeah, well, this guy is good at roaming. And we can play around bot side, right? And they're like, no. <laughs> so apparently that's not what I we love, do here. I'm so confused. I love that you bring up FPX because heck, I remember I remember we talked about it before in the last hit this split where uh it was when FPX were losing and Unox brought up the fact of like how they look so much weaker. And I hit on how I actually thought they looked improved from spring, but the disparity was I thought their mid game improved, which you know we all kind of agreed yeah. on, but their early game got weaker. And their early game yeah. was the bread and butter in spring, and it's those types of things where you're just like Man, like how, like what, what happened? Especially because all the teams you listed, like they all show the glimpses, like they all have the games where, where like they follow those formulas, they look like the teams that that they were, and it's like, oh, there it is, it's right there. But then like we go into the next game, and yeah, it's completely forgot us. It, yeah. it, it's Did so it, strange. This this is another factor as well where I feel like there are more teams this split that are leaning into that kind of classic IG happy game thing like the ig top esports you always thought of like win game number one like just completely JG. crush it game JG. number two you yeah. kind of screw around game number three you win the series right i feel like top esports are doing that way less despite being <laughs> yeah. top esports jdg <laughs> do it like every single series i love how Weibo, Weibo, i can't tell i yeah. love the way the shy know, that's just brings that happy games so, or like, the shy just is like hey we won game one now I get to play a weird champion, right? That's that's the deal. I won you game this one. Is my reward. I play like Anivia. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of. I feel like there's a lot of that in the league right now. Of yeah. like, we did well in one game. Time to relax for game number two. Um, I mean, but I will say, like, sorry, uh, go on. I was I was gonna just a quick point. Yagao actually did say that in one of like the, the pregame interviews that we have of like, yeah, you know, we like going to three games because it gives us you know more time to practice new champions. Whether true <laughs> or not, Yagao did say that this split. You know, the man's named Toothpaste, so <laughs> I don't know what my conclusion I wish be cleaner is from that this. statement, but but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's clean with it, I guess. Uh, he's polished. I I will say. I, Interestingly, some of the teams in the middle of the table, I actually have more faith to win a 2-0 than the teams at the top of the table right now. Like, aside from Victory 5, Victory 5 I feel like are super clean, uh, and top esports have been way more disciplined than you ever would expect. But like, JDG, EDG, RNG, LNG, all of these teams, 
I would not be surprised at all to see them go to three games against pretty much anyone. Teams like anyone's legend, teams like OMG on a good day, I can picture them getting those two zeros because they want it. They're not interested in having a third yeah. game for the banter. Yeah. Like they want those wins. And these are teams that are probably going to make playoffs and really want to have a good run for it. If you can make top six, that makes all the difference. Every single game win matters for these guys. And you can kind of feel it in their gameplay as well. Yeah, I, f I also feel like I do believe it'll get better in terms of like some of the shenanigans we've had because I mean play playoffs always feel like a different beast like like seriously I it feels so hard to draw any conclusions from regular season that's why anytime I look at the league I'm like I honestly have no idea who's gonna win anyone I feel like anyone who says they can break to who's gonna win LPL like th there's no way there's no way you, you can it could be just like spring where v5 look like they should be destined to to pick up the trophy, you're like, cool, we're going to get Faker versus Rookie. Then out of nowhere, I mean, top esports are slapping them in the early game. RNG, who are getting smacked in the early game as well, are just come back with the great late game decisions. You just have no idea. So I think it'll pick up. I I'm That's what I'm excited for now. Like, sure, the, the rest of the, the split's going to be great. Uh, we have tomorrow our our like pseudo mini match of the week kind of we kind of have two matches it of the is week the match week. of the week yeah let's be realistic <laughs> that is actually the match of the week the in our hearts match it's, of the week. Yeah. it's the match of the week in our hearts we got top esports versus rng tomorrow this will have been in the past by the time this episode comes out so we are now in the future i don't know if that made any sense but but point is there's definitely still some banger games but yeah playoffs gonna be a different beast there is one more topic i, I really want to hit on but before we end though so blg uh S announcing that they brought up their LDL jungler Khan and also it's been rumored slash kind of leaked by PP God stream of Weiwei saying like hey you know I'm, I'm I'm off the team I don't know if he simply meant benched or actually off the team he has not been announced as released so I'm just gonna assume it means like hey I'm not gonna play the ne you know the next series or the next few series uh and yeah I feel like BLG BLG just seems so confused. And it's like, I, I know we all agree with that no individual player is the issue on BLG. We don't really have a lot of time to watch LDL to actually like assess how BLG are going to do with this new jungler. But I guess just on the surface of BLG subtracting Weiwei, Wei, just that move in isolation. How do you guys feel about it? I'm I intrigued by it. If you want to go ahead, Orange. I, I have, so me and Orcs discussed this at length. And we okay. came up with a theory. Like, um, so Crisp, not the guy you're going to replace on this roster, right? So he's good. He's fine. Doggo, working AD carry. Like, there's no, right? You, your AD carry is very unlikely to be your major issue on a roster, right? Bin has just come in. He's the MSI champion. You're not subbing him out. You just paid a lot of money to get this guy on your roster. Uh, or I assume they paid a lot of money. I actually have no idea. Um, Icon literally just came in too. Who's left? It has to be Weiwei. Like, if it's still not working, surely Weiwei so, is the guy that you have to change. Like, I feel funny, like when you think about it like that, it's it's the only option. The funny thing is, they're actually subbing Icon out to put Fofo in to play with Khan. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's been announced for tomorrow. So, apparently, you can replace Icon as well. <laughs> so, that's just the way you can <laughs> no. do it. But, yeah, I mean, I... I think this is a roster that definitely needs someone that's willing to play more for the lanes. And I, Weiwei isn't that person. We even no. said it when BLG initially came together. The Weiwei is someone that needed to actually have a team that played around him like V5 did in 2020 when they looked good. And in summer when they came sixth or whatever it was. Um, Should have been fourth. Yeah. Um, but the problem was you don't have that at the moment. And now you're kind of looking going, okay, well, maybe we can actually... If you if Khan is willing to play towards his lanes, when you got Bin who's able to carry, Doggo is in a good spot. But I honestly I think the I think the winning combo is keeping Icon in the mid lane. I think Icon was actually willing to start fights. It may not have been pretty, but at least he was willing to do stuff yeah. in the early stages of the game. And I think if Khan is an aggressive jungler, and now again, this is I haven't had time to watch Khan. I think don't think any of us have nope. because we don't have time for LDL. So it's like okay, I mean, well, they, I, they are eight and zero in the LDL currently, and they yeah. did, they the did, they did win. Been 8 they so. did win spring, like they just outright won yeah. spring playoffs. So, but that's what I'm saying is like if you've got this, if he is an aggressive jungler that doesn't require resources, linking up with Icon, you go and roam in the early stages. You look for dives on both sides, and you can play carry on either side of the map, and that just seems like a winning combination. Yeah. So it's very strange for me to them to slap Fofo back into the middle when yeah. the reason you were actually starting to have a proactive early game 
was because Icon was willing to move. Now, maybe Fofo is saying, hey, look, I've learned my my lesson. I want to go and start roaming and I can provide you what Icon is doing, but with better hands. And if that's a combo, I'm that works for me. But if it's Fofo just coming back into play his old style, that's where I don't think it's going to work out. I have I have a theory, and this is entirely conjecture. Um, but, it, you know, Icon, I think the thing that he brought to this team was leadership, right? It's very possible that Khan was like the shot caller on this LDL team. A lot of junglers are shot callers. Like, there's a very common uh, like, yeah. pairing. If he comes in, maybe that's what Fofo needs to get back on back on form right maybe he needs Khan to come in and like just tell him what to do maybe this is something that they've practiced in scrims and this combo worked where Fofo can essentially be like that utility mid laner for the kind of like uh rookie and Shun were you know and obviously Shun wasn't shot calling that but you know have that kind of pairing that just roam around the map together um the other thing as well is I don't know how what the final conclusion will be for BLG I will say whoever made the decision for it to not be Khan and Icon together <laughs> tomorrow i thank you because i'm casted tomorrow and i don't want to deal with that you know so. <laughs> you know if if we decide not to pronounce it con we do have can, can. and bin ah can and bin ah ah no huh can can i, I don't get it Ah, uh, i saw actually i saw the jokes on reddit and i just stole it but you know <laughs> you <laughs> you did you did bring up something earlier about you just mentioned something about like blg with the roster and what they're gonna do and luckily, I have set up us being <laughs> us being the GM of BLG. Uh, mm -hmm. Post production, we we will we will pull up we will pull up the names of, of of who we could pull from. There's four players in each role you can pick. You you cannot keep any existing BLG players because I don't want us to flame or praise any of them. And let's be real, we would all keep Crisp. Crisp is honestly cracked. But yeah, so we're building the BLG team completely from scratch with players who are either subs or who are not in the LPL but have not announced retirement. Uh, even though, again, we're going to have it on screen. I'll still read out what we have. For top lane, we got Nani, Longxing, Qingtian, and ZS. Jungle, the mojo man himself, Xiaopeng, Junja, Ning, and fan favorite Ice Coke. Mid mole captain specifically English fan favorite. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> mole captain Xiao Sao Bao and Twyla. There's an old one. Oh, Twyla, my and, man. And the Zillion triple kill. Dude, it, it's like is it even an option who to take? <laughs> and then you know, bot lane, Eric Y4, Zhang Wuji on, support, Baolan, Lumao, Sword Art, and Kadaya. We did have Shubin in for a second, but the second Dagda walked away. I was like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? We're not we're not gonna to be mean <laughs> i don't know you know we, we, we got put in the shoe bin we decided yeah. we put this together right before the show Can i don't know if you guys had time to put any thought into your <laughs> rosters yet but much you actually were kind of building a bit of a banger one before we started yeah so so my thoughts obviously are it just straight on towards whoever has the most mojo out of these selections of players so nanny i think uh comfortably wins that one of the top lane chin tian had some some mojo games but i'd say nanny Wins that one hands down. Xiao Punk goes that same. I'm not even going to talk about the other junglers. They don't deserve it compared to Xiao Punk. Uh, in the mid lane, as much as I find Twyla funny, uh, it's got to be Mole. Mole. Yeah. He's, he's, he's oozing mojo. Um, the AD carry pool, I'm not going to lie, it's pretty weak when it comes to mojo, but why for? Dagda's already doing it. <laughs> His finger guns, they take the cake. They, like, he, he will always be the greatest AD carry, so why for takes that one. And then when you look at the supports, Baolan, Lumao, Sword Art, and Kadaya, like, there, it's just pure mojo across all four. I could pick any of these four, and it'd still fit the, the vibe of the team. Uh, I feel like Baolan is, like, maybe the most mojo, but just because... My boy made it to world's finals. Where are the lion? I'm going with Sword Art. Okay, Rob. What 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 yeah. what would you rate his roster? Hmm. I mean, that's a pretty good roster. Pretty pretty. I'm clean, not gonna lie. Pretty clean roster, yeah. if I do say so myself. Yeah. I feel like this is a twelfth kind of place roster. Twelfth <laughs> place. I've, what? I feel like this is a roster that goes into the LPL. They go on like a five win streak. It all collapses. They. <laughs> lose 19 games in a and row and they all flame each other then... these guys seem like they would all flame each other when they lose maybe yeah. not Nani. and then right right Nani's at the very end they go on a bit of a win streak they beat the two top teams but they're like two points off of making it into playoffs Dude, they are... oh percent. 
they're just they're just rogue warriors. They're just twenty twenty yeah. rogue warriors. They literally are. <laughs> they literally are. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanna. So I pretty much agree with Joe. Uh, with Joe, but I wouldn't mind. I. I feel like Junja has got done dirty. Yes. I actually really like Junja on EDG. Yeah. And I, I thought like when he was actually on a team that could play for team fights and stuff, I was like, oh, this guy could actually do really well. So I'd like to propose actually two little changes. I'd go Nani top lane because honestly, Nani was a beast. Like the fact that Nani is on a bench is actually kind of upsetting. I think he's a really, really solid top laner. Um, he just plays weak side. You can let him do his thing. He's going to be great in team fights. Um, even having some bangers on Wukong and stuff. Uh, so Junja, I think. Mole as well. I think Mole is a beast. Um, I was also half arguing for Captain because I think Captain got done dirty on IG yeah. where I was like, hey, we're going to pick you LeBlanc into Victor and then you get no help whatsoever and you have to figure out how the hell you're supposed to win that matchup by yourself and then scale. And you're like, that's not how that works. Um, so I think Captain could also be an argument there so he actually has a decent time. Uh, the other one, I think Zhang Wuji. Yeah. I actually think Zhang Wuji could be a bit of a beast. Um, if he's on the right roster yeah. and he's able to play for team fights, you let him do his thing. Because I'm not going to lie, Rogue Warriors made absolutely zero sense when we saw them in 2020. <laughs> so, and this guy still managed to have a couple of good games where he's, yeah. his positioning was all right. So I think Zhang Wuji could be pretty good. And I think Sword Art is still probably the best bet. Um, I think he was just such a beast when he was on Sunin. And if you've got... See, I feel like if you've got Junja and Sword Art working together... And they can play around Mo, they can play around Zhang Wuji, and you've just got a solid front line in Nani. I, I think that's a team that could actually do surprisingly well. Look, I think you both have built good rosters. Solid rosters. Rosters <laughs> who can who can maybe contend, get in playoffs, and you know, have a respectable showing. But I'm not <gasps> here. Oh wait, wait. Wait, no, I like your I like your Come on. Wait, can you wait, just wait, rebuild it? IG? Cause you've got Nani <laughs> Ning <laughs> Captain, Captain we don't have a so no, AD car use it. Oh, on, on, on. And you got Powerland. I'm, I'm building IG. I'm building IG. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, this is not a good version of IG. <laughs> it's the I mean, best Ning, version Ning, of IG. Ning gets the respect. You know, you know what's sad? You know what's sad? You kind of want to up me. I'm not building that exact roster, but where my roster starts, I'm not starting from top <laughs> to bottom. We're starting with, with a strong core. And when you want a strong core... You, you get people who are reliable, people who know each other, people who've worked together in the past. My team starts with Ning and Balan because 100% Balan is a psycho. I love the way he plays. <laughs> like he has, he has, he reminds me so much of Chocho. Him and Chocho have the same energy of like hook off cooldown, champion there, hook go forward. And <laughs> especially for Balan where it's like, I feel like so many times he would miss like on Nautilus, hook himself into terrain right next to the enemy team and go down. <laughs> That is, that is what I want. Like, I want someone who is a complete psychopath. And Ning, Ning is someone who, like, okay, mechanically not the best. Like, Ning had issues. I actually feel like Ning kind of was done dirty by the end of his stint on IG, especially when you look at 2020 IG. Because I feel like people represent 2020 IG so wrong of being like, oh, 2020 IG sucked. 2020 IG failed. It didn't go to Worlds. 2020 IG finished, they like... so close. And they finished first in one of the regular seasons, and I think the other one... I think spring they finished, like, second or third, and then summer they finished first, or vice versa. Like, they were really good before playoffs. I think a bunch of us predicted them to win playoffs going into one of those splits. And Ning's job is, like, okay, you have, you have like, the Shy, and then you have, you know, Jackie Love, Balan. Like, you have these psychopaths on, on both sides of the map. And he was just constantly sacrificing himself. Give me that man. Give me a man who who who's gonna do who's gonna do anything for the love of his life, which back then was the shy. So <laughs> the the reason the reason he was slow at clearing the jungle on Lee Sid is because he was just buying time. He was like, I'm safe in my jungle. I don't have to go into the lane with those people. I can just stay here as long as I need He's to. He's traumatized. He's tra <laughs> but but right, the point is we have the core. It's all about who you set up to play for. I mean, who I'm picking for mid, it's not even a question. Like, he's the first name on the list. I have to pick Twyla. Mo Mo no. <laughs> I, I actually really want to. I would love to. Twi Twyla's zillion bomb play, like, around that Baron was honestly so cool. The fact that he plays what Cassiopeia. What about his Everfrost Cassiopeia? Yes. Yes, I love it. You know what? I'm not even, I'm not even going to draft an AD carry. We're going to put... We're going to put Twyla down in AD carry. <laughs> I think putting Mole in AD carry makes a lot more sense. But 
Twyla, once again, he has the kind of energy that I want. It's not exactly Mojo. Your but team is going to play Nico Cassiopeia yes! as a composition. Yes, it is. I'm just I'm not ready for that. But you guys, you guys aren't ready for my top lane pick because this is the player I'm the most ready for and excited for. Long Shing, dude. I knew you were going to say Long Shing. You're wearing an RG jersey, for God's sake. Like, I feel like Long Shing was so solid at the end of his stint on, on LGD when they went to Worlds. And it's like, I don't know. I want to give Longshing yeah, another chance, and he can sit top and chill while Nico and Cassiopeia are carrying the game. <laughs> I will say, I did, I did consider a version of a like. I feel like I just had to lean into the mojo. There is an alternative version, right, where you have someone like Jong Wuji or on in the bottom lane and play strong side bot. Longshing, literally the weak side king, right? That's what everyone knows him for in the LPL. So I feel like there, there is an argument for that, um, yep. especially with Jong Wuji. Rip Shao Al when you were a carry. Sad luck. Man, it's so weird thinking that, like, again, a lot of these players are not in the LPL, are not in the LDL, also aren't retired. They're just sitting in the void, maybe playing solo queue, maybe maybe playing against D Dagabis or whatever the pro was that, that Munch said is playing Belveth. I don't know. I, I, find it. I don't know what's that happening. Was, uh, Douglas. <laughs> Douglas. He's a, he's a player in the GLL. In the, I think that's the Greek League, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so... Shout out to Douglas. Okay, well, you know... I do have a very Greek complexion, you know? <laughs> you know, you, you kind of look like a Greek god. Shoo. I love it because this this conversation, one, took us approximately to, to the amount of time that we need to do the last hit. Two, we're ending on a shout out of Douglas. So thank you to our spot. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> thank you, Douglas, <laughs> for watching this episode of The Last Hit, if you did. And most of all... You know, wait, thank you to Dag as always for being here and being being my better half. <laughs> even though he isn't my better half. He's actually he's actually Joe's half. I wish I wish he was my half. And You're then in we can we can right we now. can have a try cast. It's okay. Ooh. We can sort it out. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, we can we have... have. We've done it. Yeah. Oh We've wait. Oh wait, we have done it. We can, we can have we can have another episode of a show that cannot be you know what, we'll talk about it some other time. You know much <laughs> you know much <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on last second you're a real one because guess what That's any so cool. time i message anyone else of like hey something's come up for someone can you come on they all reject me but you you're like what? oh why do you message me last second i covered all yous when you went on hiatus during spring no 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 <laughs> i that, rob i would never insult you i meant our play by plays Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was going, I got a second, buddy. You think, you think, you think I would insult you? We're, we're Ligda. Okay. The Ligda duo. Okay. That is true. <laughs> we need a Ligda cast. Like we're getting this. derailed. We need a Ligda cast. Yeah. Okay. Like okay, wait, wait, wait. We're not going to get derailed. You know why? Because thanks everyone for watching. That's the end of the last hit. I was supposed to say the date at the start of the episode. I didn't. It is July 8th. That is the episode. <laughs> We're done. Come back next week. Bada bing, Bye, bada everyone. boom. That's it.